Hi, I'm Joth Hunt. I'm one of the members of the Southern Counties Regional Team and it's my privilege this week to bring our greetings, the greetings from Colin, from Claire, from Dave, from Amy, from Alison and Andrea. And we pray and hope that uh, you are well and God is blessing you at this time. I'm waiting, like many of you, I'm waiting for this season of COVID to come to an end. Waiting generally isn't seen to be a spiritual discipline that we, we value. But there are periods and there are moments when we are called to wait. In fact, actually in the Bible there are many. Noah had to wait. Abraham had to wait. Moses had to wait. David had to wait. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Israel had to wait. There was a waiting for the coming of Jesus. Actually, waiting is a really important season and moment. In fact, actually, Scripture encourages us to to wait. Uh, Psalm 27 says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. Or Isaiah, Blessed are all who wait for him. Waiting, it seems to me, can be a crucial season and time. And we're in this season, this moment between Easter and Pentecost, actually Ascension and Pentecost, which is a time of waiting a season of waiting that we can learn so much from. When Jesus says to his disciples, wait for the gift that I will send to you. And so they had to learn to wait. So what can we learn in this season of waiting? I'm still waiting. I'm waiting for that moment when I can go down to the park run on a Saturday morning and join with several other hundred runners. This waiting is not easy and one of the things that we can learn within the season of waiting is that precious and wonderful gift, spiritual attribute actually of patience. I, I, I think I'm naturally a very impatient person, uh, perhaps you identify with that. But actually in this moment we can learn to be patient. The Bible so often connects these two things together, a season of waiting and the spiritual attribute of patient, patience. David writes, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Paul writes, but if we have a hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. James says, be patient, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. And then he goes on to talk about the farmer who sows a seed and waits patiently for the seed to grow. Patience is a precious spiritual attribute of which we can learn in this season And a person of patience is a person of faith. A person of patience is saying to God, it's not about my will, it's not about my time, and it's not about my agenda. It's actually about your will, it's about your time scale, and it's about your agenda, and I will wait patiently for that. May God teach us so much about patience in this moment, this time. I'm waiting, still waiting. I'm waiting for that opportunity to go and see my parents again and to give my mum a big hug because I know that's what she needs at this moment in time. But while we're in this waiting period, there are some really precious opportunities for us to grasp. In Acts 1 we read that while the disciples were waiting for the Spirit to come, they, they weren't inactive. They were active. And they were busy in one particular way. They were gathering together and constantly praying together. That's what Luke recalls for us. That sense of constant prayer. And this waiting season is an opportunity for us too to learn so much more about prayer. And I think that's already taking place. It's great that Baptists together are meeting twice a week so that we might pray on behalf of our nation. And it's good to hear the stories of churches and Christians that are deepening their prayer life. And having the opportunity to to share with God their thoughts and their feelings. But also, most importantly, finding out what it is to listen and wait on God. To see what God has to say to them. This waiting season is an opportunity for us to grow and learn more and more about the depth of prayer. I'm still here, waiting 
I'm waiting for that moment when the church will once again be able to gather together face to face and we'll be able to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. But the waiting will come to an end. The waiting season is not the end game. Jesus said to his disciples, wait for the Holy Spirit. But he also said to his disciples, when the Spirit comes on you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Pentecost is coming. The time when the Spirit will arrive and the disciples will be sent out into the world. The season of sending is round the corner. I had the real privilege to attend a Zoom service with Spurgeon Baptist Church in Guernsey the other day. It was Liberation Sunday and the speaker on that occasion was Paul Le Boutier. And Paul shared about when he was a child under the occupation of the Nazis in Guernsey. And one of the memories he has is being very hungry. In fact, actually 400 people died in Guernsey of starvation during the occupation years. But when liberation came and into the years of Paul's life, he talked about how that experience of hunger taught him to be motivated to care for hungry children. And he worked alongside the the Billy Graham Association Uh, caring for hungry children, starving children in Africa and India for nearly 20 years. The period of waiting is a season of preparation. Preparation for the moment when we will be sent as the witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ into the world. We may not know what that preparation is, but let us have humble hearts and humble lives to receive in this season whatever God has for us to prepare us for whatever is in the future. The season of waiting will come to an end. Let me finish this time by leading us in a prayer. And I found a prayer uh, written by Debbie Brodowski and it's a prayer of waiting. So let me share this with you and let's pray together. Lord, I thank you that you will answer my prayers in your perfect timing. Reveal what is in my heart and make me ready to handle the answer in the right way when it comes. Help me to pray by faith consistently and long term, to believe, wait and then move forward in your timing. Help me to be patient in prayer, not to give up but to trust, to trust you even during the moments when I feel negative or impatient. I don't want to live by my feelings, but I want to live by faith. Help me not to take matters into my own hands. I choose to trust you and I refuse to believe in the lies of the enemy. I choose to be faithful in prayer deepening my understanding and giving me a greater knowledge of what you are doing in my life. I choose to hold unswervingly to the hope that I profess. Stretch my faith in the midst of the wait, just as you did with your disciples. I thank you and you that you have all the wisdom and will answer my prayers in the perfect way. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then these words from Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Praise be to God. Amen.